Yo, Merry Christmas to everybody out there. Merry Christmas. I hope you're spending time with your friends, your family, your loved ones. But um, yo, this episode today is actually my personal breakdown of a trip that my wife and I, along with my brothers and their wives, took a few months ago to Jamaica. So I felt like, you know what, this week, why not drop, you know, my personal perspective on a trip we took not long ago to Jamaica. And maybe this will serve as an inspiration as you start working on your 2019 budget and where you and your family plan on traveling to. Maybe this will help. You know, I add some cost in there and talk about, you know, some of the things that we did and uh, maybe it'll serve as inspiration. So y'all enjoy. And again, Merry, Merry Christmas to all. What's happening, y'all? This is Mike D with Black Fathers Now, where we're bringing the village to the brothers. Every couple of weeks, you can look forward to a quick inspirational message or a thought-provoking guest with knowledge and wisdom all geared towards helping you be the best father that you can be. We're bringing the village to you. Now is your turn to do something with what you learn. All right, y'all. Let's go. What's going on, y'all? This is Mike D with Black Fathers Now, and uh, hope y'all are having a good day. Um, today's episode actually is a continuation of a series that we are periodically running called Sneakers and Planes. And the whole concept of Sneakers and Planes is to encourage you to travel. Um, like my man Worldwide Nate said on a previous episode, see the world by yourself with your girl and with your family and you know the thing about travel is travel allows you to really put your hands on what's really going on and see it not from someone else's perspective but for you to allow your senses to take all that's in a particular place or a particular event so um today's episode actually falls in line with that and it's a continuation and it's my personal thoughts on my wife and I's recent trip to Jamaica, along with my uh, two brothers and their wives. So it was a six person or three couple trip to Jamaica. So this was my first time in Jamaica. You know, I've traveled to a lot of other islands. I've been to Barbados and Aruba. And, um, and when I say been to, I've actually spent time in these places. You know, we actually got, went and kind of dove into culture in these locations, but Barbados, Aruba, Curacao, um, let me see, you know, different places in Canada, I've been to London, you know, Tanzania, Qatar, um, I mean, just, just different, different, different places. Like I've been around, but I've never been to Jamaica before. And so, um, I was excited to go and excited to experience, you know, this country that's so close to the U.S., and, um, and I'm a huge fan of Jamaican food. I mean, every, anytime I'm in a city anywhere and there's a Jamaican restaurant, that's typically my default or my go-to because, you know, you throw some curry goat or some aki and, aki and salt fish or some oxtails and, oh my gosh, some really good patties. You put that stuff in my face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go in that direction. But anyway, so I'm, I've always been a fan of Jamaican food and Jamaican cuisine and Jamaican culture. But I had never been to the island before. And this was my first time. Everybody that we had, that we went with, everyone had been there before. But this was my first trip there. And so, um, you know, let's start with the notion of cost. You know, Jamaica is one of those places where you can probably find a very budget-friendly trip. And you can also go and blow the roof off the mug if you want to, right? And um, whenever we travel, I always start with, and I know it changes, but I always start with the goal of somewhere hovering around $2,000, you know, flight and hotel for my wife and I whenever we're going somewhere. And um, and that pretty much held the same with Jamaica. Like that's kind of the, the framework or the threshold that I like to kind of throw out there. Now, I know it tends to scale up or potentially you can catch a deal and get stuff cheaper than that. But usually I, I use that as a starting point to start with the um, the budget, because what happens when you start searching things is like, yes, you can go to the name brand resorts that, 
everybody talks about or that spend a lot of money on advertising and typically they're going to be extremely expensive i mean that advertising doesn't come cheap and so um so yes you can go that route if you have a budget that's limitless yeah you can go to one of the you know the big name spots that everybody knows about that um that you can spend well over two or three thousand dollars per person for four or five days but that was not in our wheelhouse so we um we ended up going to the Rio in Ocho Rios and I think our total from a cost perspective I think the flight and the hotel and this is an all-inclusive resort I believe it came to right about 20 like right just a shot under like 2500 like 24 something for the both of us to fly down and spend five days at the Rio in Ocho Rios Jamaica and the Rio again is all-inclusive so all the drinks you want all the food you want to eat your hotel we were oceanfront you know it was it was cool and you know beachfront like you had access to all the the non-motorized um water sports so all the stand-up paddle boards the kayaks the you know the wind like the little uh, wind surfing uh joints the little um sailboats i mean you had you had access to all of that and so all of that was included so i think ours was just under 2500 for five days flying in and out of atlanta and so um so that just kind of gives you kind of gives you a frame of reference i like to throw that stuff out there so that people see what some of the costs are right because at the end of the day you know we want to go places but we also have to have a firm understanding of what things cost now truthfully you can probably find a cheaper resort somewhere that maybe is a little cheaper and you can definitely spend more than that but this is what we spent and it was a good good place um we stayed at the Rio in Ocho Rios and it was a good mix there like the thing is now I don't know how y'all are but I like to engage with contemporaries right so people that you know I would hang out with and all and sometimes even if you can afford it if you go too high end on your accommodations you know, you're staying with folks that you probably wouldn't necessarily groove with on a regular basis. And it's kind of stuffy, right? And so what I come to find and what we've come to find is kind of like those moderately priced places, you know, tend to bring an array of people and it tends to be more of a lively crowd. So if you're into that, then most definitely the Ryu was where it was at. We enjoyed ourselves. So that was getting there. And typically when you fly into Jamaica um, a lot of times people organize or arrange their transportation to and from the airport to their hotel beforehand and we did that through our um, you know through their booking and we used like Expedia and they had a package I believe it was like 75 bucks round trip for both of us total from the airport to the hotel so you can do that or if you just want to get a taxi when you get to or get a shuttle when you get to the airport, you can do that as well. Most of the um, the cost on the transportation from Montego Bay Airport to your hotel is pretty standard. I mean, it's pretty much a standard fee. So um, so you can book it when you get there or you can book it beforehand. We did it beforehand to kind of minimize all the, you know, the hassle of having to find travel and all of that. Um and like I said, that was like 75 bucks round trip. And it was a basically a shuttle bus that took us and which uh, any other res people who were staying at the Ryu or stayed in another area um, called Discovery Bay, which is in between Montego Bay and Ocho Rios. Oh, another thing, the way it's positioned or the way things are situated in Jamaica in the areas that you're probably going to um, visit that's it's on the north side of the island right montego bay international airport is where you'll fly into typically you could fly into kingston but most people vacationing are flying into montego bay and montego bay is on the north side of the island and ocho rios is about an hour and a half east of montego bay and negril is about an hour and a half west of montego bay so the distance between Ocho Rios and Negril is about a three hour drive. OK, but Montego Bay sits dead in the middle. So just kind of have that framework. If you're thinking about visiting Jamaica, you can stay in Montego Bay and be 15 minutes from the airport. You can be in Negril, which is about an hour and a half west, or you can be in Ocho Rios, which is about an hour and a half east. 
and there are a few places in between that you can stay as well but just kind of giving you a frame of reference so the transportation to and from the airport is about an hour and a half going from Montego Bay to Ocho Rios so we got to the hotel and um, in all honesty you know if you want to be someone who just kind of chills at the hotel you can just do that stay on the beach toes in the sand 24 7 but that's not us we like to dive into culture and see things and, and kick it so what we did one day was um one of the first days we got there one of my brothers had a friend who was already in uh jamaica but they were actually in Negril. now remember the geographic reference i just gave you Negril is about a three hour ride from ocho rios um by car and so we had a driver set up and they drove us from ocho rios to Negril to hang out with my brother's friend and his wife and what was interesting um you know, in the grill, you have Rick's Cafe, which is extremely popular. It's a very popular tourist destination. You know, if you've ever seen people in Jamaica jumping off the cliffs next to this big restaurant and bar, that's Rick's Cafe. So we went to do that to go jump off the cliffs and say we did Rick's. But honestly, outside of jumping off the cliffs, there's really nothing, um, nothing else there except for a bar and a restaurant. But the thing about the grill, the grill being on the west western side of the north coast of Jamaica is you see beautiful sunsets. You see the sun setting over the ocean from the grill. And like I mentioned before, Ocho Rios is more east, so the sun rises over the ocean pretty much coming from where you are in Ocho Rios. It sets over the ocean when um, you're in the grill. So if you're looking to see beautiful sunsets and all, the grill is definitely the spot to go. If you want to jump off the cliffs at Rick's, definitely the spot to go. What we assessed, um, kind of going around Negril a little bit, is Negril seemed to be a little more, more of a lazy, laid back, you know, environment. So if you're looking to kind of chill and just be on the beach, Negril might be the spot for you. You know what I'm saying? Because it seemed to be a little more laid back, a little more chill, and um, you know, and the beaches there supposedly are the the better beaches of the three areas: Montego Bay. Ocho Rios and the grill and the grill supposedly has the best beaches. So, um, so that was cool. And uh, so we went and did a day trip there, you know, watched the sunset, jumped off the cliffs, hung out with, you know, some friends with one of my brothers and his wife, um, before the other one came in the next day. And so then we got back, like I said, it's about a three hour drive from the grill back to Ocho Rios. We got back and then my second brother came in with his wife the day after that. And so, like I said, we hung out at the hotel some, but we wanted to dive into the culture as well. So another thing that we did was, you know, we wanted to do Dunn's River Falls, which is, I believe, the top tourist destination on the island of Jamaica. And um, we, if you're staying at the Rio, they have a catamaran that's actually docked right there at the Rio that does tours from the Ryu to Dunn's River Falls, which is only like probably a half a mile down the beach. But um but you can go and you can book that there. So that's not something that you have to book prior to and all the tour companies will be selling you excursions, excursions, excursions. And like I said, we stayed at the Ryu. So they had the catamaran docked right there to be able to take you to um Dunn's River Falls. And we were able to negotiate a good rate uh, with them. And I think we paid $55 per person. And what that included was a catamaran ride where, you know, it was a party boat where they played music, dancing, all of that. We went um, snorkeling out into in the middle of the ocean. Then we, um, you know, went, they took us to Dunn's River Falls. And that included the entry, entrance fee and all of that to climb Dunn's River Falls. And then um, after that, then, you know, they opened up the bar on the catamaran and it was a party boat for, you know, like 45 minutes out there on the water. And then they brought us back. So it was really cool. And if you're going to do that and do the catamaran and Dunn's River Cruise, I would probably wait until you get to Jamaica to book that. Don't feel the need to book your excursions prior to like that's one of the things that, um, you know, we had to think about is, you know, you know, because some places you go. You want to have all your excursions booked and everything scheduled and ready to go. But when it comes to things like, you know, going to major tour des tourist destinations, if you're going to Jamaica, I would probably wait until you get to your hotel 
And for one, you have the ability to be on the ground and potentially negotiate the rates. That's one. But then two, there's always competition, right? So the catamaran that was set up outside of the Ryu was not the only one that was running tours to um, Duns River Falls. So that was really not a big deal. So we had options. So if you're going to Jamaica and you want to do excursions, it's probably best just to wait till you get there to book what you want to do. And then you're on the ground and you have the ability to negotiate because at the end of the day, you know, it is a culture that uh, that prides itself in haggling a little bit. So, you know, the first price that you get for an excursion or something like that is probably not the price that you have to pay. All right. So. um, But yeah, so we took a catamaran. We paid fifty five dollars per person to ride that. It was a party boat, um, went snorkeling as well climb the duns river falls and if you're not familiar with duns river falls google it it's um it's really cool it's like basically it's a big waterfall that you'll see pictures of people holding hands climbing up and you know it's it's a little challenging like even if you're in good shape you know it's, it's kind of challenging because your footing is off and the difference and this is what really got us <laughs> the fact that the water is fresh water coming out of it and that fresh water is freezing cold See, you just get out of the ocean, like you're playing in the ocean all day in Jamaica, and the water's warm, and then you start climbing Duns River Falls, and that water is ice cold, like it's freezing. So that makes it a little challenging as you climb up, but it's fun nonetheless, and uh, it's an accomplishment to get up. I wore my GoPro, so I had some videos and stuff um, climbing Duns River Falls, and then, like I said, the party catamaran on the way back was really dope, and um, oh, and, and <laughs> you have to get used to this. When you're in Jamaica, anybody who provides service is probably going to be looking for a tip. So if you have a driver, they'll be looking for a tip. If you have a guide, they'll be looking for a tip. If you're just anything. I mean, if somebody helps you with your bags, they'll be looking for a tip. That's the culture. All right. Don't don't get um, don't get beside yourself about it. It's just the culture. You know, just make sure you keep you a few ones so you can always, you know, tip folks here or there. And um, but that's just that's just part of it. Oh, one thing. And this is where I got caught up when we first got off the airplane. There was like a little currency exchange desk there that was offering. um, Basically, they said, you know, free currency exchange, no fees. But I came to find out after we got out of the airport that they gave us a bad rate. Okay, the thing is, and, and we like to buy or like to get you know local currency when we go to places because sometimes you feel like you get a better deal by using local currency that's not the case in jamaica honestly the smart thing to do is get your cash before you if you're coming from the u.s get your cash before you leave and make sure you get a gang of ones get a lot of ones i mean i guess people don't think you're going to the strip club or something but (laughs) whatever um but get a lot of ones and make sure you have a lot of ones for things like tips and and all of that but i wouldn't even worry about converting your money into uh jamaican jamaican the jamaican currency because at the end of the day everywhere you go even local spots take u.s dollars all right so don't um i wouldn't even worry about you know converting i mean now if you have small bills and stuff or you have make a transaction and you have a little bit of change left they'll probably give you change back in the jamaican currency but i wouldn't worry about you know, converting things in the airport or going through those currency exchange uh, little shops or whatever. I legitimately would just, you know, get all the cash you're going to get prior to put your card up. And um, I mean, most places take cards, too, if you want to use that. But why even go that route? Just get the cash you're going to get and uh, make sure you get a lot of small bills as well um, so that you can go and and haggle and tip and do what you got to do. So that's that. Um, So, yeah, so we did the catamaran Duns River cruise. It was like 55 bucks per person. And we negotiated that down. I think they initially started at 60 something. And, you know, we just basically told them what we were willing to pay. And they um, they accepted it and it was fine. So book your excursions when you get there. And then you have um, you have that opportunity to negotiate. But then also the flexibility to figure out what it is you really want to do. Right. Because um, the other part of it is depending on where you're staying, um, 
the travel time to various excursions and destinations could be a good bit longer because like a lot of places around the world, some of the roads are not the best, right? So it might not be a long distance, but it's going to take you a long time to get there because you're driving up mountains and weaving around curves and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's, that's, that's that. Um, so yeah, the next excursion we did was, um, we wanted to see uh, the Bob Marley, the Nine Mile area, right? So that's basically it's in St. Anne's, which is the you know the the par the province or the parish that uh, the province that um, Ocho Rios is in, but it's like an hour and a half, almost two hours away still from Ocho Rios because you have to go up the mountain and go through all these small back roads. But we wanted to go see bob marley's birthplace as mausoleum and that area is called nine mile very big tourist destination but it's really cool and so um and the thing is it gets you away from the beach like it literally takes you up into the mountains and you literally see a totally different side of jamaica like you see the jamaican countryside and um on our way to nine mile um the route that we were taking we passed the birthplace of marcus garvey and so Marcus Garvey's house is still intact, it's a little greenhouse, and um, they have a little monument there next, you know, next to it, and you can take pictures of it and all of that. But we passed Marcus Garvey's house, which is really dope, and um, and that took us, you know, in the direction towards Nine Mile. And in the same light, we also wanted to see some. I like to see like agriculture, and I'm I'm a big foodie, right? So I like food and agriculture and spices and all that good stuff. And so we actually hooked up a tour of a small coffee farm and so the brother that we had as our driver knew a guy with a coffee farm and he hooked it up for us to go and get a tour of the coffee farm and so he basically gave us the history of you know jamaican coffee you know everybody's heard of blue mountain coffee but he was telling us about high mountain coffee which was the coffee that you know he produced on his farms and um and then the other agriculture he talked about the fruits and uh, you know one of the one of his biggest crops is, are the scotch bonnet peppers which are used famously in the you know the jerk chicken and all of that stuff and so um so he took us you know over on a tour of the farm and the process of you know roasting the coffee and harvesting the coffee and you know how how much he yields on his farms and all of that and what was interesting that we found out was 80% of the coffee from Jamaica is exported to Japan. I was under the assumption that a lot of it would come to the U.S. And he said, no, 80 percent of the coffee um, from Jamaica ends up in Japan. So that was quite, that was kind of interesting. So but we learned that he talked about, you know, various agriculture and then obviously talked about weed um, because, you know, marijuana is is part of the culture as well. And he was saying how each resident, each residence is allowed five marijuana plants and each individual can have up to two ounces um from you know legally or is decriminalized or whatever as long as you have less than that amount and so um so he was showing us you know his plant and you know it was growing and kind of giving us the the history on the medicinal side of marijuana you know on his farm and so that was uh that was quite interesting oh and <laughs> and speaking of marijuana like I mentioned, it is a it's, it's a part of the culture. Um, most of us have heard of Bob Marley and have, you know, at least been privy to like Rastafarianism and, you know, the Rastas who in the typically uh, stereotypically, you know, we see a lot of marijuana being smoked. And at the end of the day, there is a lot of weed being smoked in Jamaica and pretty much everywhere you go somebody's probably going to offer you some weed. <laughs> They're going to offer to sell you some. You're sitting on the beach, you know, a brother's going to walk up to you and ask if you need anything, you know, and he's talking about that. And so, um, but just, so don't get alarmed, don't get startled, but just know that's just part of the culture and they're not bothering you. They're not coming to harm you. They're just looking to sell you some weed if you want it. Right. And you don't have to take it, obviously. But if you do, if you're a person who indulges a little bit, you know, you're going to be in the right place. And so, um, so, yeah, so we went to the coffee farm, did the tour, and then we took it on up to Nine Mile. And Nine Mile is the area that Bob Marley, or is the place in which Bob Marley was born, and he's also buried there. He's buried there, his mom, and I think they said his, like, his grandparents, and, and it's kind of like the family land. 
and um and Nine Mile is run by his family and some of the Rastas. So you're getting, you know, a real tour of and some real history of you know the Rastafarianism, and they talk a little bit about Haile Selassie, and you know they, you know, you walk through the home, you see the room that Bob Marley was born in, you sit on Mount Zion Rock where he meditated, and you see his mausoleum. Um, I mean, it's you know, and then there's also the tourist part of it where you can buy all kind of you know memorabilia and weed paraphernalia and all of that kind of stuff. And again, marijuana will be smoked throughout this whole tour the person conducting your tour will probably be smoking weed and a lot of the people on your tour will probably be smoking weed and it's it's not necessarily encouraged well it is encouraged if it's something that you want to do so they tell you up front it's like hey yeah you can smoke any and everywhere you know i found it kind of funny that when you were touring the nine mile facility when you went into bob marley's mausoleum you know where his uh you know where his remains are, where he's buried, or not buried, but where he is, his um, his tomb is, or his, you know, where he's buried. The um, you have to take your shoes off, but you're allowed to smoke when you walk into the mausoleum. It was kind of funny. It was like an oxymoron. It's kind of interesting. But uh, but yeah. So yeah, you had to take your shoes off to show reverence, but you could smoke weed when you walk through it. <laughs> so it it was kind of funny. But anyway, it was it was it was enlightening though. It was definitely um. A really cool spot man you learned a lot about him and you just saw his impact but the biggest thing too though you saw this man who impacted generations and who impacted the world with his message came from such a humble place right and that was really really dope man and um one of the things that you know the brother talked about was there were so many metaphors or things that are represented by bob marley's life like you know he was about peace he was about unity but then you know the brother who was leading our tour was like you know bob came from a white man and a black woman you know so like he was biracial and it was just like you know if we can all come together we can create things as beautiful as as what bob created and you know it it was just interesting it was a fascinating perspective um when you start looking at bob marley his life and um and just what he represented. It, it, it was dope, man. So I highly recommend the nine mile tour. Like I said, it, it's the 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 route getting there is an adventure in itself. And uh, gives you know, you see the countryside, good pictures, all of that. And the entry fee to the the um, nine mile, I believe, is twenty five U.S. dollars per person. And that's just your entry fee. That's not if you choose to buy anything or whatever. But twenty five dollars to get in. That's your tour. And as always you know you tip your tour guide and tip your bartender or if you're gonna buy some weed you tip your weed whatever <laughs> you know what i'm saying you're going to uh that's what you're going to um that's 25 dollars to get in and just whatever the cost is for your driver to take you up there that's basically it um and other part of it i mean we didn't stay in jamaica long we were only there for five days um but if i was there long term I would strongly consider not driving ever. Man, that driving is no joke, man. Like, these roads are no punk at all. So while you're there, I know some people like to be adventurous and rent cars and all of that. This ain't a place I would advise anybody to rent a car. Unless you're, like, moving to Jamaica, I wouldn't advise you to to rent a car. I would say, yo, just, just pay for a taxi or you know talk to the concierge at the hotel to hook up a driver or whatever and go from there it's not going to be super expensive um what else so yeah so we did that oh we definitely had to go outside the hotel and eat um we had to go to scotchy's and you know scotchy's is the famous jerk shack or jerk chicken restaurant or jerk restaurant they do more than just chicken and uh scotchy's was dope we went to the one in ocho rios right down the street from the rio dope i mean like it's the real deal cooked on pimento wood with the tin on top of it you smoke you smell it i mean you smell the smoke from the pimento wood and it's oh my gosh it's it's some good food man so scotchies definitely um highly recommend it also we we got recommended to check out juicy patty which is basically a chain of you know jamaican pat you know a chain of patty it's a chain of restaurants that do patties so juicy patty is a chain that's all over the place so you see those all over the place you know if you like jamaican patties definitely grab you one from juicy patty 
it was it was pretty good and they're pretty inexpensive too so um but yeah so and outside of that man we literally hung out at the hotel like i said we were only there for five days and you know we did a lot um it's not super expensive um like i said you can spend as much as you want or you can you know find some budget friendly options and you know and and make it happen but um you know the Ryu Hotel in Ocho Rios was awesome. The food was good. The people were nice, very accommodating. Um, the cool thing about the Ryu, and this is something that you don't always get in a lot of resorts. You know, a lot of resorts, you know, tend to give you the resort food. So it's basically you're in Jamaica or you're in Barbados or you're in you know some other island or other country eating like Italian food or pizzas and all of that. It's like eh nobody wants that you're in jamaica you want some solid jamaican food like i want some stuff straight up from the west indies you know what i'm saying like i don't want to go to jamaica and eat pizza and chicken fingers that's just not to me that would defeat the purpose so the cool thing about the rio ocho rios every meal that i had there was something authentic <laughs> from jamaica like every morning there was aki and saltfish and fried dumplings and callaloo and cabbage and if they didn't have ackee and saltfish, they had mackerel. And um, and so, but they typically had the fried dumplings and the cabbage and callaloo and just the traditional, you know, Jamaican breakfast items were there, you know, all and, and even throughout the day. I mean, pretty much at every meal, there was always either like oxtails or curry goat or, you know, whole fried snapper or escovitch fish or, I mean, each meal they had local stuff and all the fruits and stuff lots of mango and pineapples and papayas and all of this was at the hotel like they really did a good job when it comes to the food and we just literally went to the um just the the, the buffet that they had and they had all of these things on the buffet all the time which was really really good and so it was probably one of the better hotel buffets that i've experienced you know throughout my travels around the world and so um so yeah, kudos to the Ryu in regards to the food in Ocho Rios. It was pretty dope. And so um so yeah, man, I mean, these are just kind of like my thoughts. Um I would highly recommend Jamaica. You know, the thing about it, Jamaica is so big and so diverse that you can go multiple times and not do the same thing, right? And um the people are cool. Highly recommend get off the resort, go see some folks, find you some local stuff to do, interact with some people um you know talk to the folks that are working there it's like where do they go where do they eat where do they hang out you know where do they go and and do do fun stuff you know find out what they do and try to replicate that man get out and interact with the people because one of the things that we noticed was once you got off the resort like i could not differentiate from a landscape perspective a difference from jamaica to barbados to curacao to Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, to parts of Zanzibar. I mean, it, it literally, I mean, to even parts of, you know, like rural America and, you know, and coastal areas. Like, I could not differentiate the landscape because it looks so similar. But what differentiated it all was the people. So when you travel around the world, make sure you interact with the people. Make sure you dive into the culture with the people make sure you learn about the people don't get caught up in you know trying to replicate what you do at home you know just in a foreign land go and do what they do learn from them because at the end of the day that's how you change that's how you develop understanding and empathy you know for people who may be a little bit have a slightly different experience from you that's what it's all about so get out and see the people get out and you know and learn from the people experience taste the foods i mean just just enjoy yourself so i highly recommend jamaica and i'll guarantee this is not going to be the last time that we go to the island um i could see myself going back to jamaica numerous times because there's so much to do and so many things to see and the folks are cool and it's just a dope place so i fully endorse jamaica so again this is sneakers and plane this is sneakers and planes episode um of black fathers now just my personal thoughts on our not so long ago trip to jamaica um in which ocho rios was our jump off spot so fellas literally see the world by yourself with your girl or with your family i mean with all of them and hit the trifecta like like i said i, I quote my man worldwide nate numerous times on that because it, it, it hits it hits home 
so important sneakers and planes whether by sneaker or by plane you got to go see the world you got to experience it and by seeing the world i mean go and interact with the people all right well yo as always y'all follow black fathers now on instagram facebook twitter uh definitely visit blackfathersnow.com grab a copy of dynamic black fatherhood manifesto it's on amazon but you can get it from the website blackfathersnow.com or i am mike dorsey.com um you know i mean look give us some reviews too we love to get reviews share this episode with some friends um and until next time y'all be blessed well and wise and i get at you peace yo fellas i hope you enjoyed today's episode and always 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 visit blackfathersnow.com as well as follow Black Fathers Now on virtually every social media platform you can think of. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everywhere. Just follow us and uh, and engage with us, man. Look forward to hearing from you. And uh, I guess until next time, I'll holler at you. Peace.